The dog and I are playing out the front of a Greek temple made of sandstone. There's always been a bit of an enigma wrapped around this structure. Not just because the building itself is unusual, but because of where it is. We're here in the deep hollows of Lena Valley, miles and miles away from where most of the buildings that are kind of like this were put up in the early colonial period, in those first few decades of Van Diemen's land. Why is it here? It's a mystery, but it's a mystery that might have been solved because there exists a map. And that map contains a sketching, a sketching of a road, a road that's lost to us. It didn't go out across the flat, it went up over the hills and it was called the Hobart Highland Road. It was the main road between Hobart and Launceston. It's kind of all gone now, but its shadow is still there. I'm gonna do my best by using this map with the dog to aid me we're going to walk out and see where it went, if we can work out roughly where it went and how it went from the main part of Hobart over to here and beyond. We're going to try and solve a mystery. So let's see how we go. An undated map titled Rough Plan of Dr. Scott's Estate. Within it is a side detail. This was the first main road north of Hobart. Cobbled together, the coarse drawing with modern satellite images were able to place just where it was. Taking a left at the top of North Hobart, we escalate up Elphinstone Road and into the suburb now called Mount Stewart. But Mount Stewart isn't a mountain. It's a ridge foothill that runs off the larger mountain above the capital. Mont Stuart Elphinstone was the governor of Bombay and he had a ship named after him which visited Hobart. Mont Stuart Road and Elphinstone Road were named after him. Over time, Mont Stuart Road became Mount Stuart Road. The area also became known as Mount Stuart. Halfway up Elphinstone Road is a sandstone marker. Boundary stone. Hobart Town, 1857. This spot was established as the northwest corner of the Hobart municipality boundary. Further up Elphinstone exists what we now believe to be a once military outpost. It's now a home and we don't know that much about it but it had a purpose and that would have likely been to control workings on the Highland Road and to monitor movements, bush rangers, escaped convicts, regular citizens not towing the line. At the time, we were on the edge of things. Dr. Scott's map shows the Highland Road taking a bend roughly where Strathern Street now is. generally following the contours of the land, avoiding creeks and steep bits. Much of the road now has homes built across it. Within their foundations, there may be ruins. The original existence of this strange road can help explain why Mount Stewart has an ad hoc feel to it. The roads reflect the make it up as you go nature of the place. Along the route, there are modern roads. Sometimes they run similar to the Highland Road but often they cut it at right angles. One might be wont to wonder why horse-drawn traffic should attempt the hills instead of taking the flatter route used today. In the early 1800s, proper roads usually didn't exist, essentially desire pass through the bush. Unless routed on hard, rocky ground, animal carriage rapidly churned them to dust and the rain turned that dust to mud. The valleys of Lena 
and the plains of Newtown were damp. Before modern drainage, the forested fields could be covered with bogs. Horses could break their legs. Traffic could not go through it, but it could go above it, where it was high and dry. Now we don't know exactly where the Highland Road passed across the rivulet, but it seems to have been somewhere around here. You come to a place like this where it wasn't too far across and was far enough up towards the source of the rivulet that it wouldn't flood. Ideally you'd go over the top of the source like it does or did at the top of Elphinstone Road. But if you were to do it here you'd put down a bunch of logs, maybe some stones, probably fell a big gum tree and it'd go across and then you could walk along and get to the other side and be about your way. But one thing that was different there for sure was these willow trees weren't here. They were all planted by the English settlers. Today, the most visible signs of the route are in the gully above Lena Valley RSL. There are no signs announcing its existence to the public. Instead, it is hidden below the trees, knitted within the passage of lifetimes. The stone that I'm sitting on and the one that the dog is standing on are boulders and they've rolled down the hill and they've taken out what's left of the retaining wall that was built along the cut here. We're actually sitting in the middle of the Hobart Highland Road. Back in the day, there would have been mounted soldiers coming through here, horse and carriage, people on foot. They also would have took things like cattle and sheep through here, pushed them about to get them to market or move them to better grassland. It's all grown in over time with this sort of stuff and it's not so easy to just see for yourself but you can use your brain and you can imagine how it was. When they took out all the native plants, they took out a lot of big trees and when you do that, you allow for erosion over time because the rain comes along and without the root system in the ground holding everything together, it allows the soil to wash downhill down into the gully there. And when you do that, boulders get exposed. And over time, they'll roll downhill because of gravity. And when they do that, they do what they've done here. They've done a lot of damage. The thing about this wall here, this retaining wall, it's actually really quite long, is that it's older than a lot of walls in Hobart. And it's more interesting than a lot of walls in Hobart. And those, a lot of walls that I'm talking about, are walls that are protected under heritage law. This one isn't. And I think the reason why it's not is because people just don't know about it. The birds are chirping. Every now and again you hear the echo of chainsaw darting across the valley. The Hobart Highland Road was narrow. It wasn't a lot wider than a carriage was. So every now and again you get to a spot like this where it's a bit wider, it breaks out. Now, if one was want to speculate, you could imagine that this sort of area would be where one side of the traffic would pull in so that the other traffic could pass. The road, the Highland Road, was said to be macadamised. There are accounts mentioning this. That's basically where you put rocks and hard stuff into the soil so it stays firm and it doesn't just get washed away in heavy rain. You don't want to be going through mud. That's the whole point of the Hobart Highland Road to avoid the mud. So it makes sense that it was macadamised. Underneath us here, underneath this soil that's washed down off the side of the hill, there could be such stones. Another thing that could have happened is that they were taken away for Frankenstein purposes to build buildings elsewhere in Hobart or to make other roads or souvenired here and there. But I'd imagine underneath us, a foot or so underground, they'd be there. You've got to remember, this road is more than 200 years old. A lot can happen over time. Some of those old stones from the old retaining wall might now be found in new walls. This area has been terraced next to the old road. It was terraced so they could plant some trees that are behind us here. 
Now, I don't know how old this all is, but pretty old. So we're here next to the road and there are these things. I'm not really sure what they are. So I'll just put it down on the ground for the minute. I've got green gauges and I've got red apples. The word Lena in Lena Valley is an Aboriginal word for kangaroo. And for quite some time, all the maps mark the place, Kangaroo Valley. A Conte. Today called Lady Franklin Museum was built by the wife of Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land, John Franklin. On the then main road, Jane Franklin forced convicts to build a structure on her land. It had aspirations. It was to be the centrepiece of a large botanical garden. Built in the shape of Greek ancients, it was intended to evoke a sense of cultural civilization. Within 30 years, the land was an orchard and the temple was being used for storage. Farm animals grazed the grounds. In 1938, the city of Hobart took over the site. When the Franklins left the island in 1843, they abandoned their daughter, Mathena, a kid who they had adopted from the chief of an indigenous tribe and raised alongside their biological daughter, Eleanor. In comparison, a sandstone building wasn't so much to leave behind. Ultimately, the Highland Road was killed by stone bridges. New technology proliferated in the second half of the 1800s and new ways were found. After the Sandstone Temple, the road followed the north bank of the Newtown Rivulet for some distance before turning north and continuing to O'Brien's Bridge, now called Glenorchy. We don't know exactly where it went though, our knowledge is parked inside a cul-de-sac. So this is it, this is the end of the road and it's where the map runs out. It's been a pretty long day, if I'm honest with you. The harsh sun's kind of gone away now. But we're here at the end of the Highland Road. It still exists. It exists here in Lena Valley opposite the milk factory. It exists up in the foothills of Mount Stewart and exists in North Hobart. For the dog and I to get here, we had to get through the blackberry bushes and go through the rivulet. But before we could get that far, we had to know to come looking. And we knew that there might be something here because there were clues, there were documents that were saved, things that were archived, and people shared information. There are all sorts of things in history and in Tasmanian history and Hobart history that are completely lost and we can't retrieve them because nobody saved them and nobody shared them. People didn't think to or people gate kept stuff. They're still going on. There are other roads in Tasmania that have totally disappeared. Time has retracted around them. But they could have been saved in people's minds, but they're gone now. Hobart Highland Road is still here. This is it. It's here and it's here.